the word bonds, I think right. was investment. So he's saying that his investment in Christ right. is helping the people. Yeah. Yeah, they might invest it because he did have followers. Yeah, his salvation, his work out there, his salvation out there. He walking the work of God with the fear and trembling in him. The fear and trembling in him in doing what he's doing for Christ. I've handed him that bond. I've handed him the bond that he has with Christ Jesus. Because he's not just serving God, but he's serving him with the fear and tremble that is in him. Amen? Amen. And let's see what... And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Okay, what is that telling us? That he was speaking without fear because all the word that he's speaking is coming from God and he knows it's true. So when he speaks, he speaks without fear. I don't yeah. Know, he, he don't fear, I know he feared God, but the people then that was against him, he wasn't there. He did not fear them. Because he know everything that he is speaking is coming from God. And that shows his faith and determination. That's what we should get. Because when you want to do the work of God, so many challenges will come your way. So many others will come your way. But you have to be strong in the faith. In that belief that you have in Christ Jesus. In that faith that you have that he is the king of kings. He is the lord of lords. You are going to speak with that boldness in you. You are not going to look at, oh, because this person is going to they look at me this kind of way. Oh, this person, no. You want to live Christ-like? You want to live you, your life is, is Christ? To live that Christ-like, you have to have that boldness in you. You have to have that faith in him that you're serving. You don't have that. You don't have to serve him with sentiment. You don't have to serve him with sentiments like, oh, uh, what are they going to feel? How if I if I speak this word, um, the congregation is going to be empty. Oh no. You just speak how did how God give it to you. And that was what Paul was doing. Yes. What is it telling us here? I think some of them uh, were envy of him. Christ hmm. who are friendly and strive, and some also good will. Hmm. So are you saying that there was people there that was envy? Hmm. Envy? Envy for what? For his king, the word of God. Remember when you are, you are doing God's work, you, are, you, are, you, you volunteer yourself. He showcases you. Hmm? He showcases you. So Paul acknowledged all that. That it is possible that he's preaching the word of God. And there are, some people have wrong motive. Some people might interpret it. Oh, are, are you showing off? Or what are you trying to do? Or do you think you know better than we are than us? So all these things. Some they, they mimic you. Some they mock you too because of the message that you 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 come with because of the way you 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 carry yourself. Now God has changed you, so you're no longer them. You are of this world. But you're no longer of this world. You know, you're in this world, but you're no longer of this world. So now the things that matter to you are the things of Christ. You think everybody around you, they're going to be happy? No. Some are going to be full of joy. And Paul acknowledges that. He knows that like these things are going to be happening. But what did he do? He continued to hold on. He continued to keep himself in the Lord. And that's what we are supposed to be doing too. Myself and you, that's what we are supposed to be doing. We have to just be selfless in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Sixteen. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Amen. What is that talking about? Sincerely, he was 
sincerely. And I'm preaching the word of God as believers, as Paul was telling us. We have to be vigilant. We have to be vigilant ab, um, against all these devices, all these forces, all these drives. We have to be really vigilant in preaching this word. We have to be motivated in preaching this word. We have to do so out of love, not out of strife, not out of jealousy, not out of envy. That's what he's talking about here. He said to to one, he said the one the one preach Christ is of contention. He's not full of jealous, not, not sincerity, supposing to add affliction to others. No, you're not doing that. You're doing it in love. Even if you want to correct, you correct in love. You want to like, you see somebody like a sister doing something that is not right. You don't just come to them openly like that. You don't come to them openly like that. You come in love. You do so out of love. You motivate people. You preach to those that what you have to be doing those those motivations in love, not out of out of envy, not out of strife. Like you picking on people when you want to speak. You want to speak on what that is this particular sister that does something that you don't like. You hold on to that thing to be talking about it in the form of preaching. Paul said that is not good. Amen. What is that telling us? Mm-hmm. For the others of love, knowing that I am set, I'm set for the defense of the gospel. Yes, yeah, so he defends, he seems like he will defend himself and let them know I am. Those are the goals. Right, right, and he loves the goals. He the goals we are, yeah. we are, we are not of jealousy, we are not of hostility, they are not of selfishness. The goal about Paul's gospel was preaching about love. Yes, so he defends, so he, he, yeah. he was defending the gospel, preaching and defending it. He yes. probably saying other things like you said before, wrong, but he defends it. Yeah, even when he was in prison, yeah. he didn't take it as as bad, he take it in good faith. Mm-hmm. So sometimes as Christians, we may be going through challenges, yeah. but that's why his word said in um, in 1 Thessalonians 5 18, it said in all circumstances, mm-hmm. whether they are good or they are bad, that you, thank, you give thanks to God. Yeah. You give thanks to him because that is his will for us. That's what Paul is telling them here. Yes, and even when in prison, he still was defending the God. Yes, he was saying that because no matter how you do in God's work, there are, there are going to be some people that are going to like you. There are going to be some people that they don't like because some people don't want to leave their comfort zone. So if you are here coming to preach the undiluted word, that which is the truth of God, they're not going to like you. But you, are you going to worry about them? No, you're not going to worry about them. You're not going to look at them like, oh, they are doing this, oh, they are doing this. No, all those persecutions, you take them in the faith of God. Amen? Amen. You take them in good faith. Uh, 18. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice and will rejoice. Mm. Mm-hmm. What is Paul telling us? Is he saying that whether, like, whether in your presence or not in your presence, he will preach therein and do rejoice about it? Yeah, because Paul, Paul was so happy that Christ is being proclaimed, regardless of what was the reason, regardless of what was the situation. Yeah. But the most, um, the, the the most important thing here to Paul was Christ. That Christ was being proclaimed. He rejoices in that. He was glad in that. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he will continue. Yeah, he will continue because the joy of the Lord is always, it's always our strength. It's always our strength. It's always what we need to hold on to. And that was what Paul was saying to them. For I know that they shall turn 
enter my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. What is that telling us? Because I think Paul is trying to say that he know that God will answer his prayer. That no matter what. No matter what. And supply. I will continue. Exactly. Yeah. And I will continue. That 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 pass that passionate mm -hmm. that pa that passionate thing of Christ in Paul has always been there and will continue to be there in that spirit, in the spirit of the, yes. the Holy Spirit will continue to live with him. Yes. He continues to, to love mm -hmm. with without without no no strings attached. Like yes. Pastor we say if you have to love, you just have to love. That you love without no speech at all. Uh, regardless of the person's flaws, we still go along with them. Amen. Amen. Because it's all about Christ. Amen. 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, till now also Christ shall be magnified in my body. Whether it be by life or by death. Hmm. It's simple there. What is Paul telling us? What is that? I think Paul is saying he's not he's not ashamed to, to preach the word of God. But that's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Are we, are we supposed to be ashamed of Christ? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do it with boldness. Yeah, no so on our lives. Lives. Or what? We have to put on Christ. And we, have to, we, we have to have that courage. We have to have that courage to preach His word. We have to have that boldness to preach His word. You cannot say somebody is your father and you are ashamed of him in the public or you are ashamed of him in the garden. We have to gather ourselves with that boldness. Because remember, He has not given us the spirit of fear. He has given us the spirit of boldness and of sound mind. And with that sound mind, we are able to, to proclaim him anywhere we go. We are able to talk about his goodness. We are able to testify about his goodness. We are able to, to say that God is in good, you know? That his faithfulness endures forever. His mercy endures forever. That God is kind. We should be having all that, that goodness in us, regardless of what is the dedication we are going through. Amen? Amen. Amen. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Mm -hmm. For me to live is Christ. Are you saying that for me to live? She's telling us that we were just in Philippians, Philippians one. Yes, we say to we are just doing a mission.
I did not think that we know this Jesus. I don't know where we'll be. <laughs> like, like there's a song in my country. He said, "If not so, he said, I gladly when Jesus save me. I gladly when Jesus save me." If not so be for Jesus, now who say I go there? I'm glad you where Jesus saved me. Say, I'm glad that Jesus saved me. Had it not been for Jesus, where would I be? You see? He said, had it not been for this Jesus, where will I be? If not so be for Jesus, now who say I go there? I'm glad you where Jesus saved me. Because he says, he's glad that Jesus saved him. He's glad that Jesus saved him. Rejoicing and praising God abundantly by um, coming to Him again. Where I think He just rejoicing. He just happy. He just rejoicing abundantly, abundantly. I lack in Christ, and that's what made Him happy when He rejoiced abundantly. In Galatians nine twenty one, He said. They say, for to me to live is Christ mm -hmm. and to die is gain. Mm -hmm. So when you live for Christ, you really don't have nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. But so so unbelievers, they might think you're losing. Even when we are going through challenges, they might say, Oh, you're serving God, but why are you going through mm -hmm. all these kind of things? Yeah. You're serving God, like why is this happening to you? But God didn't promise us that everything is going to be so smooth. Exactly. That's why I say we are going through it, and when we go through it, we come, we have the, the gain. We have the gain for Christ. We have victory on the other side. You see, that's what He's telling them here. Yes, like for me, for me to live, you know. Then, then um, uh, verse twenty two says, "But, it's about, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. But yet." I shall choose, I shall, I shall choose, I would not.
they rather live in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They rather do the things of Christ. Yes, they mean. rather live in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because those that serve Christ, they don't serve him in the flesh. And he rather be depart and live in Christ. Yes. Because he said. I, 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 I know that a little bit I'm ready.